You can also transfer your heart from everywhere you are to the shrine of Imam al -Rada. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, the great and benevolent, the kind Imam, Imam al rauf When we say he is Imam al rauf it means that he is Ra'uf for all. He is Ra'uf for everybody that is saying salam to him from very close in the shrine of himself, from the places of the people's homelands, they say salam and they transfer their souls and hearts to Imam Ali. Salam. We have to believe in this fact that Imam is the Imam for all. Those people who are near to him, those people who are away from him physically, but spiritually close, inshallah. And we must believe that whenever you say salam, there is a salam back to you and to us. The salam back. And what does salam back mean? It's just only salam, the way we say salam to each other. Yeah, when we say salam to each other, we just have the salam and that's the good feeling, you know, is transferred to us. It's the least type of blessing that you receive when you say salam to somebody and the salam back to us. So, but it's not only that from Imam Ali salam. Just looking and staring at the zari of Imam Ali salam, focusing your eyes in the zari, has a lot of blessings. You don't know that how many afflictions, trials will go away, will fade away will be removed from your life, even when you look at the zari of Imam Ali We don't know that how many afflictions, the evil eyes, the sihr, will go away when we say salam to Imam Ali salam. He's doing this for us in the world of Barzakh, and he knows what will happen. What we know is that we are sure that every salam has a salam back. And when we say salam for common people, ordinary people, it's just a very simple salam back. But for imam, salam is something different. It's not only saying salam, it's a real existential salam. Inshallah, we try to focus, we try to concentrate, we try to have the presence of part of saying this salam to imam alayhi salam. And then, Imam al rauf Ali ibn Musa Rida will look at us the look of mercy. The stronger and the kinder, the more benevolent, the more focused our salam is, the stronger, the more focused, the more benevolent, the kinder the salam of back will be, you know? So it's just like this. This is the rule this is the law of the universe whatever you do there is a reflection there is a reaction for that any action calls for a reaction and the stronger the action is the stronger the reaction will be it's the rules this is the world of causality and we have to just care about it we have to understand it Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. Just close your eyes everywhere you are. In every mood or mood or feeling you are, forget about it. Every sadness, every grudge, every sorrow, every anger, every jealousy, I don't know, everything, everything. Leave it from your heart. Put it aside, okay? Just open your hearts to Imam Ali ibn Musa salam and come to him very open-hearted and come to him clean, clean. Leave any darkness behind. Just try to will, okay? It's not that difficult. Forgive all, every person around you, every person that has been unkind to you, okay? Leave every 
unkindness behind and just come to to the kind imam to the door of the kind imam with kindness with forgiving every person that has shown some negative things to you show, shown some like uh, caused any sort of sadness and sorrow for you okay inshallah ta'ala so that this salam will be a real true salam the true salam of light bismillahir rahmanir rahim bismillahir rahmanir rahim allahumma salli ala ali ibn musa ridal murtada allahumma salli ala ali ibn musa ridal murtada الإمام التقي النقي وحجتك على من فوق الأرض ومن تحت الثراء الشديد الشهيد صلاة كثيرة تامة A truthful salam to you, my beloved Imam. A complete salam from my tongue, from my heart, and from my soul to you, O my beloved Imam. Salatan kathiratan tamatan zakiyatan mutawasilan mutawatiratan mutaradifan أفضل ما صليت على أحد من أوليائك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صل على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد as it is mentioned in the last part of the dua of the salam and salawat, just like the best salam that the awliya Allah, the wali of Imam alayhi salam, the followers, the truth followers of Imam alayhi salam are saying this salam to him and this salawat to him. We try to say this salam and we, we expect Imam alayhi salam to, to accept this salam from us and this salawat from us. The way the awliya of Allah wa ta'ala, the great rankers, the high rankers of the world of metaphysical physicality, the world of Wilaya are saying this salam to him. Imagine somebody goes to the shrine of Imam Ali Salam and says a special salam to Imam in a way that he hears the salam back from the shrine. Okay, how different the salam of this person is from the others, such as Ibrahim and Mujab, that he is in Karbala, says salam to Imam Ali Salam, and he receives the salam back. That is why he is named after this phenomenon and this event. He was named after that. He was named Ibrahim Mujab because he received the salam from the from inside the zari and he heard it actually. However, we can also hear. Don't worry about that, okay? <laughs> Don't be disappointed. We also hear the feeling that you have inside yourself, okay? If you have a change of feeling, you know, a different feeling. When you're saying salam, it means that imam is looking at you. Yeah, that primitive type of feeling for some primitive, for some better, stronger, more complex and comprehensive type of feeling, you know, totally different feeling inside yourself. It means that something 
has happened outside. And what is that? It is that Imam Ali Islam has looked at you. Then why this cry comes? Why this tears come? You know, from where? What is the root for that? If it's nothing, can nothing bring tears to you? Can something that does not exist bring something, some tears for you? No. Don't say even it's a mindset. Don't say it's a mindset. Yeah, sometimes the mindset also has an impact on you because it's just the mindset. You think about something emotional. You think about something that just tries to trigger your feelings and emotions so that you, the, the tears come out of your, your, your eyes. It's not only a mindset. It's a mindset and a reality, you know? Sometimes there is the reality, but there is no mindset, no cry. Sometimes there is the mindset, but there is no reality. Many fake ideas that people have, the mindsets. Whatever they think is true, but it's not a true. But for Imam alayhi salam, for the religious aspects, that we know that there is a truth behind it, it's also, it's both the mindset and the reality, but the reality speaks louder than this mindset that I have, okay? My mindset is just, just my concentration. Yes, you just be on the mood, in the mood, okay? You just try to have some activations of, of your mind and your focus, that's it. Maybe 10%, 20%. 80% is given from outside, which is Imam alayhi salam. Alhamdulillah. We, inshallah, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, give us the, the barakah and also give us the impact of a salam that the awliya of himself have given this salam to Imam alayhi salam. Inshallah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So let's recite one page, my dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, wa alaykum as salam to all of you. Wa alaykum as salam, you're welcome, you're welcome. Okay. Let's open. Our Quran on page, which page? Just 28. Today is the 28th night of or eve of the, layal, the, the month of Ramadan, and we're just passing by this month very fast. We are just witnessing the final days. Final days. Who is unhappy? Who is happy? Who is unhappy? Can you raise your hands? <laughs> is there somebody that is happy that this month of Ramadan is going to end? Or really, really, you know, just refer to your heart. Are you really happy? Sad or sad or happy, you know? It really differs. You know? Some some people have both feelings, you know, both feelings. But you have to see that which type of feeling like dominates the other one. Sadness dominates the happiness or happiness dominates the sadness, you know. If it's basically the sadness, you know, congratulations to you. Congratulations. Because you have been... You have been in a feast we have been in a feast and we're going to lose this this feast you have been we have been on a very lovely journey invited into, into this journey and now we are just going some, those like guards those people who are the servants the uh waiters waitresses they are saying goodbye let's say goodbye to each other for the next year Congratulations to those who have taken advantage a lot from these, this blessing that they had during this month. This sadness, if you have right now, 
and the sadness dominates the happiness, it means that you have taken advantage. It means that your soul has been very happy. It means that your soul has taken a lot of blessings, alhamdulillah, during this month. So one of the criteria to know that I have taken advantage from this month or not is that you look at your feeling right now, okay? During these last final days of of month of Ramadan. All right. Let's recite one page and then inshallah. I feel not really maximal to use the chance in Ramadan. Sean, I'm not happy. How can one be happy being away from this great, great host? MashaAllah. We will not be empty handed, however, you know, we will not be empty handed. This is a month that according to the words of Rasulullah even when you are sleeping it is an ibadah for us you are breathing that breathing also is a tasbih glorification of Allah Taala. wa ta'ala but congratulations to those who have been awake and, you know, who were not sleepy all days and nights. Those who were on alert mode, you know, cautious. They were just waiting for the blessings to come from different directions, taking advantage. Inshallah, Allah had given us this blessing and for the next year, we will, we will be prepared more and more. I don't remember, I don't I don't really forget the very first days of the month of Rajab. We had the meetings in the Holy Shrine of Imam Raza alayhi salam talking about Salat. We also had the month of Sha'ban, different meetings. I was just saying to myself, oh Sayyid, the month of Rajab will pass away very soon. The month of Sha'ban very soon too. Three months, really. In a flash of a moment, you know. In a flash of a moment, really passed very fast the months of feast and blessing. Yeah, we are sad that we have not taken advantages advantage enough from this holy month. I'm just talking about myself. For, for sure, you are not you are better of of like uh taken more benefits. And because we are just losing this month for this year. And we are sad because we don't know that we might witness, we might witness this blessing and this feast for the next year or not. We are also sad that why in every scale and level of taking benefit we are, why we have not taken more benefits from this month. We could do better. We could do more and more. We could recite more Quran. We could say more Salats. We could do more goods. We could have more presence of heart, you know? All in all. We're also sad that we have to say goodbye to the host of this month and the hosts of this month. The angels, we were with the angels. We were with the angels. We were, weren't we? The angels were around us, but we were blind. We couldn't see them. Maybe good for those who could see them and be the good, ho good hosts for their guests. However, the angels are the true guests, are the true hosts. But sometimes it, can, it could be vice versa. When they come to, the, to your houses, okay? You can be a host and they can be a guest. When you do something good, you're doing good to your guest and the guest becomes happy. They see you and they see that you're doing good. Your guest becomes happy, the angels. All around your place, your house, they come and go, okay? They see your behaviors, your feelings, your moods. Ya Allah. 
we're also sad that maybe there are special angels they say goodbye to the next year and we don't have them anymore around us the the ramadani angels you know the ramadani angels we're also sad that that the shayateen hands will also be open again you know during this month they their hands were in cuffs but now their hands are open and they have more penetrations they have more like revelation to negativity and evil we have to be sad we have to be sad we have lost many things in goodness we have we're going to face maybe bad things like these shayateen one of them for example and we have to try harder than before alhamdulillah during this month we, we didn't have to try that hard in terms of being good in terms of doing good in terms of thinking good because everything was prepared angels were helping us but during the other months we have to try harder showing more attempt and endeavor may allah tabarak wa ta'ala save us inshallah ta'ala surah mubarak al hashr page 545 surah mubarak al hashr a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَالَّذِي أَخْرَجَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ لِأَوَّلِ الْحَشْرِ ما ظننتم أن يخرجوا وظنوا أنهم مانعتهم حصونهم من الله فأتاهم الله من حيث لم يحتسبوا وقذف في قلوبهم الرعب يخرب يخربون بيوتهم بأيديهم وأيدي المؤمنين فاعتبروا يا أولي الأبصار ولولا أن كتب الله عليهم الجلاء لعذبهم في الدنيا ولهم في الآخرة عذاب النار ذلك بأنهم شاقوا الله ورسوله ومن يشاق الله فإن الله شديد العقاب ما قطعتم من لينة أو تركتموها قائمة على أصولها فبإذن الله وليخزي الفاسقين وما أفاء الله على رسوله منهم فما أوجفتم عليه من خيل ولا ركاب ولكن الله يسلط رسله على من يشاء والله على كل شيء قدير ما أفاء الله على رسوله من أهل القرى فلله وللرسول ولذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل كي لا يكون دولة بين الأغنياء منكم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب 
للفقراء المهاجرين الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم وأموالهم يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا وينصرون الله ورسوله أولئك هم الصادقون والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون Last ayah والذين جاءوا من بعدهم يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وحج الفرج Yes, only in terms of Quran we are sad that maybe in other days and nights other than the month of Ramadan we cannot recite this much of the Quran We are also sad that maybe the revelations, inspirations we have from the Holy Quran the feelings that we receive when we recite the Quran is not the same feeling that we have in the other months, not the same feeling that we have in the month of Ramadan. We are also sad that, look, 10 ayahs, 10 ayahs we recited. It equals how many total recitation of the whole Quran? 10 ayahs, it means what? 10 times you have recited the whole Qur'an 10 times, only in this month of Ramadan. We are also sad that in the other months we recite one ayah, the thawab of that ayah is only one ayah. But when you recite in the month of Ramadan, one ayah equals one whole Qur'an's recitation. It means 6,000 ayahs. In the month of Ramadan, it is one, it's not one ayah. One ayah equals about more than 6,000 ayah. It is as if you have recited 6,000 ayah. Then the other months, it's only one ayah. If it's not the loss, what is it then? If it's not the sadness, what is it then? What is it then? All right, dear brothers and sisters, let's go to Surah Mubarak Qadr. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. We already discussed about the philosophy of why we say first Audu Billah and then we say Bismillahir Rahman Rahim in the beginning session, the first session, as I remember. Then we had the word Bismillah. Why do we start by Ism? And that Ism is very significant because we start from the zahir, from the appearance of everything. It means that your appearance shall be ilahi, divinely, okay? It's not only inside, it's also outside. Husnul zahir yan kashif ala husnul batin. Look at this. Husnul zahir yan kashif ala husnul batin. Somebody's appearance is righteous. It's highly probable that his button is also righteous. However, there are signs to know the hypocrites. There are signs to know the hypocrite from the appearance of the people, from the words, from the actions, from, you know. But most of the time, the righteous appearance leads to the righteous insight. And the righteous insight leads to the righteous appearance. That is why we say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with Ismullah, not Allah himself. Allah is the bottom of everything. 
But he says, start with Ismullah, your appearance. Start with the appearance, the atmosphere, the environment around you. You know, everything, when you look at everything around you yourself, you have to remember God, Allah. It must be a reminder of you. Look at this, for example, book. I have a book here. You know, it's the reminder of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. I have also a piece of jar here, okay? Even this, look at this. This can be a reminder of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. It can be the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the structure, Islamic structure, Islamic architecture, you know? There's also a piece of rock here. I don't know if you see it, if you see it, you know? The design of this piece of rock also can... Yeah, that's that's real. That's real. You look at the appearance of somebody, you remember God. You look at the shrine of Imam Raza alayhi salam here, you know, it reminds you of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Appearance, appearance. Don't forget this. It's not only the heart. A true, a truthful heart brings truthful appearance. A truthful appearance also is a means of becoming becoming truthful inside. I don't really forget this memory that I have. I was just in the University of Medicine. I was the imam of them for a while, for some, some years actually. And there were some people actually, especially the doctors and physicians coming. And sometimes I gave speech to them. I don't really forget that. Once I was just speaking and speaking. And then after that, the salat finished, the words are finished. I came out of that place and there was another person who seemed to be religious, you know, and he had beard and mustache and he was like a humble person somehow. And he was to some extent a religious person. He was not somebody to be an antagonist or against religiosity and the sheikhs or somebody like that. Then I said salam to him, and when I said salam to him, he felt somehow close to me and said, and opened the words of his heart to me. And he said, uh, excuse me, Sheikh, I don't accept you Sheikhs at all. I don't like you Sheikhs at all. And I just gave a smile to him and said, can you tell me why? <laughs> that was really surprising for me, you know? The very first word, and he was also, you know, a doctor at the same time he was a teacher and he was to some extent religious you know that was what really surprising to me and he was an old man maybe more than 60 years if somebody like a, a child comes to me and says oh sheikh i don't like you <laughs> that's not surprising but this was really sur surprising to me that was why i just gave a smile to him and said can you tell me why however really in my heart I was surprised because he said this word to me, but in my heart, I really became sad to some extent. Why you say? Let the others say that, okay, we don't like you, for example. And he told me this, and I asked this question. Can you tell me why? He said, because he said this, I don't like this clothing, this feature of you, you know, this amama, this like robe and this Aba, Abayas, something like this. You try to show yourself different from the common people and ordinary people first. And then he said to me, because this clothing and this uniform puts you on the verge of, on the threshold of hypocrisy. When you are in this clothing and this uh, uniform, your character is something when you're away, you're not wearing this uniform, your character is different. Maybe he is right, yes? Maybe he is right. What's your answer then? If somebody tells you, for example, you as a woman, you're wearing chador. If you're wearing chador, your character is something, your personality is something. And when you're not wearing chador, your personality is something different. That is why. You're a hypocrite. I don't like you to be like this. Then... If hypocrisy is negative, I don't like this dressing and this clothing either. Yeah, his personal reason, but 
his his like analogy and syllogism is, is somehow right, you know, his reasoning. It's not good to be two-faced, you know, to have two personalities, double standards. It's not good to be a hypocrite, but what's the problem with this uniform? If this uniform is the cause of hypocrisy, for example, being two-faced, having two personalities, having double standards, two standards in different circumstances and situations, can you give an answer to him that make him silent, for example, a satisfactory answer that really makes sense. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Allah inspired me in that moment. I don't think anyone intentionally have double standards when they dress according to the occasion. I was just shocked. Okay, you will be shocked. The Mariam says, I don't think anyone intentionally have double standards when they dress according to the occasion. But it really happens, you know? It really happens. The essence of this dress is what? Quran says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna anzalna ilaykum libasa yuwari sawatikum warisha. We have descended and sent to you the clothing, the different forms of clothing, for example. Why? Yuwari sawatikum. To cover your uh, negative aspects, negative appearances, you know? Sawatikum. Warisha. So that it, it's beautifying, you know? To beautify you. This is the essence of, of dressing and clothing. Quran says those who are knowledgeable and the ignorant are different. So what if they have different clothing too? Yeah, that's right. But if this clothing leads to hypocrisy, Sister Fatima, the question is here that this, this uniform is not just because I want to, to inform everybody. I want to proclaim that, okay, I'm a sheikh for example, I'm a religious person, then you can ask me religious, this is my mission. Every person in any different platforms and different types of jobs and occupations have their, their own uniforms. When you go to school, for example, you have a special uniform. The military people have their own uniforms, for example, okay? They want to proclaim that their mission is this, they have a special mission. So a sheikh also has this mission. His mission, mission is to propagate Islam, is to preach Islam. People must know that there is somebody like a sheikh, for example, and whenever they want to ask something, if I don't have this turban, who knows that, for example, I'm a sheikh and come and ask me, for example. And the religious mission, religious missions shall always be accessible because it covers all the layers of our life, different layers. People on the streets, they face religious questions. They want somebody to answer. People in families, sheikhs in families, sheikhs in relatives, sheikhs on the streets, sheikhs everywhere. <laughs> Excuse me to say this, even in the bathroom, really, you know. Right now, in that very moment, somebody faces a problem, uh, Islamic rulings, for example, he faces an issue about the blood, about the urine, about Nijis, about things, you know, about wudu. So, either he has to leave it to another occasion to ask, he leave this place and go to a specific place like the, for example, doctor's office. Or no, somebody is really present there. Oh, Sheikh, excuse me, I have a problem. I don't want any money from anybody. But my mission is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on my shoulder that I have to say, give the answer to the questions of the people very moment that they have the answers, for example. They have the questions. That's right. My mission is to be in different places and different layers of society, of, of people's lives. So I have to have this uniform. That's no problem about that. The problem is that when you wear this uniform in a hypocritical format, and he is right. 
He is right. To some extent, he is right. Some people are like this. I have this uniform. I'm wearing like this. My personality is something. When I just take this uniform off, when you just take your chador off, you have another different personality. Sir Nick Head, I see this dual face in my city often a lot. It's sad. Yeah, you see? Dual face. But I will tell you that there's no problem about this, okay? We want to prove that even if you have double face in this uniform, it's not a problem. It's a virtue. It's really a virtue, not a vice perspective, vice aspect of this cloth. Even if you have a dual face. Mr. Afshan, to some extent, is right. The, the uniform brings in more sense of responsibility, even for doctors, as soon they wear their white coats, they become more answerable. MashaAllah. You see? Mr. Afshan. So when you when you wear this uniform, it brings more responsibility to you. When I have this, a mama, I'm not allowed to do many things. I cannot walk the people, I, I cannot walk the way the common people, ordinary people walk. I cannot say any word that other people shall say. I cannot look at anything. I cannot drink or eat anything that all the people eat, you know? I have to watch my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my tongue, my way of talking, my way of speaking, you know, my my way of behaving and treatment, all in all, are under control. This uniform is controlling me. Is it bad? Is it bad? I need a self-control. Okay, I have an automatic self-control. Is it bad? You tell me if it's bad. We should not generalize before knowing a person well enough, especially being judgmental just from the clothings. That's right. That's right. We don't talk about the exceptions, okay? We just talk about those people who are somehow like in different formats. Even if we say that, for example, 90% of the people, if really 90% of the sheikhs, religious people, now, it's not only about this uniform. It's also about your chador, your hijab, for example. When you have your hijab, your behavior is different from that than of the time that would, you, you don't have the hijab. It's different. When you wear, for example, beard, your treatment, your behavior, your like feelings shall be different, you know? But we say that even if even if uh, if you are using this cloth for ninety nine percent of the people, it changes really the personality. It changes the personality. Is there something wrong with the change of personality? Is there something wrong? If it is on a positive path, it changes my behavior. It changes my attitudes. In a positive format, yeah, when the personality is changed negatively, that's negative. But when it controls you in order to be positive, even if inside you, you don't want to be like this, but in appearance, you try to be like this because of the respect that you have to this cloth, for example, to this amama, which is the crown of angels, which is the wearing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ahlul Bayt, it's a good control. It's a good controller. May Allah, Sister Maria, may Allah transform his prejudice into an optimistic dua. <laughs> may Allah, inshallah. So the, I think when people dress a certain way, that's the standard they live up to try to anyway. We hold ourselves up to that standard. It's also a way of people recognizing what you stand for. Yeah, that recognition is another point. No problem about that. But the problem is that you try to have the double standard, dual face. You show yourself hypocritical, change of personality, you know. Is there any problem with this or not? 
I remember reading a story on Imam Bakr al Islam. We were in good clothes in the company of others and humble clothes when he was alone. Yeah, Sister Maryam. Sister Maryam also is like a soldier wear a uniform to go to battleground to perform duties. Yeah, that's right, to perform the duties. But if you use this, this like uniform, okay, for uh, abusing it, in abusing the religion, for example, if you're using the uniform of the battlefield, like a shield, for example, okay, and if you try to abuse it, such as, for example, your uniform, you wear the uniform of the military and you go on the street, for example, <clears throat> Not to defend the people's rights, not to attack the enemy, but it's just to try to show off, to circumvent, to try to show to the people that you are like this. Yes, yes, I'm like this. I'm a military man. Be cautious. Be cautious. If you don't respect me, then it will be dangerous for you, for example. The secondary purpose, the secondary negative purpose that can be uh lied in this in this uniform you try to show that perspective of that okay it's an abusement it's a misuse i would say to a man of hypocrite doesn't need religious clothes to be a hypocrite they need a disease of the heart a mu'min likewise doesn't need religious clothes to be religious if they have taqwa but the clothes is very important we said that you know Surah Mubarakah Qadr, we talked about Bismillah, Ismullah. We have to have the sign of a mu'min. The sign of the mu'min is not only in the heart, Brother Mu'ayyid, Mr. Brother Mu'ayyid. It's also in the appearance. This clothes, this dressing, this uniform is the uniform of taqwa. It brings you closer to the realm of taqwa. You want to be taqwa? Okay, shave your face, for example. Dress tight pants, you know, no wearing, no hijab. Why do you wear hijab? Because if you wear hijab, it brings you closer to taqwa. You want to be muttaqi. Dressing also is the way to controlling, mashallah. Hypocrite has nothing to do with uniform. One might not qualify to perform the duties. Okay, that's good. Thanks for your thoughts and brainstorming. I the gave the answer I gave to him was the answer that some of you just gave to me here. Yeah, we wear the dressings and the uniforms in order to control ourselves. That's our main purpose. That's our purpose. I told him, you are wearing beard, for example. You have a ring in your finger, for example. Why is it for? What is the purpose? Is it only because you like, for example, the ring? Is it only because uh, you want to have a ring in your finger, for example, by because of simple reasons? Or you have another purpose too? Doesn't this ring help you be steadfast on the path of taqwa? Doesn't this ring help you from afflictions, negative eyes, evil eyes, for example? Does it have any other benefits? You wear it because of that. You wear it because of the faith you have. Okay, go and shave your face. I, I told that man he had beard. And you will see that you will be changed in your behavior. When you have the beard, it's totally different. This beard controls you in terms of taqwa. Try to wear my amama for a while, and you will see that your behavior also will be changed. Your personality will be changed. The philosophy of clothing and uniforms and dressings that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has created for us in, in dunya is, is not to be on a, in an animalistic life. This clothing is also controlling you. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, why do we have so many orders in terms of clothing and wearings? Why? Allah says, wear the hijab like this, wear a turban, for example, for the man. Even in, in, in the past times, women also had the turbans. I already told you, small turbans. And it really beautifies women's like feature if they wear 
if you just try to refer to some films in the past times, you know, in times of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, women also were wearing turban, and above the turban, they were wearing uh, the chador, the jilbab. That's it. Clothing is, and the dressing and the wearing is a, is a controller, is something that controls your behavior, your treatment. It helps you on the path of taqwa. I said, you go in the bathroom also, okay? You go into the bathroom. You be totally naked. Sorry to say this, my dear brothers and sisters. That is why, for example, we have some orders in the religion that when you go to the bathroom, don't be totally naked because Allah is present there. When you are naked, for example, in the bathroom, you want to take a shower, Allah wa ta'ala is present there, angels might be present there. Even if they are not present, your behavior, your feeling about yourself will be changed. You have more self-control over your feelings when you have a covering, even, even a simple covering. You walk, for example, among your family members, children, with an underwear. Change it to another scenario. Wear uh, like something, an abba. I don't say wear like uh, very formally. We have two casual types of clothing, like only underwear. We have highly formal clothing. I don't say, for example, in, at home you have to wear highly formal. No. But you can be covered. I remember one of my like friends was were saying that he never wore underwear in front of his kids and and, and children inside the family. Their ch his children had never seen him with the underwear inside home. It's really different. Not only the Dignity of you yourself before you is increased, but the dignity of you before the others. And you will be dignified when the wearing is different, actually. So this cloth is, is, clothing is really a controller, is really a self-control. I told him, yes, the final word, that yes, I wear this wearing and this uniform in order to control myself in order to change my personality. I want this uniform for my personality to be controlled and to be changed. If I don't have this turban, I might do a lot of things that many people do. If one, if your daughter, if your wife does not have the chador, she will do a lot of things that other people will do. It doesn't bring self-respect, self-dignity, self-control for you when you don't have the weary we have many controllers around ourselves many controllers people can control you righteous people can control you quran can control you the month of ramadan can control you can change your personality your personality in the month of ramadan is different from the other months you say more salat you recite more quran you have more presence of heart Allah is even also changing your personality. He is trying to help you. One self-control of oneself or for one person is the, the wearing and the uniform. If you, if you wear modest, if you wear modest, then you will act modestly. That's a rule. That's a law. If you wear unmodest without modesty, you will not act modestly. It's a rule. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah says, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنَ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلَّ أَمْرِ Allah sends down the malaika and the ruh. They say this ruh might be a special type of angel, the uh, boss or the, the principle of all the angels, the greatest of the angels that Allah has created. This is one interpretation. The other says this ruh is the very Jibra'il, salamullah alayhi, that is the message-giving apostle of Allah, the message-giving, message-transferring 
angel of Allah wa ta'ala. This is the second uh, interpretation. He can be either the, the Jibra'il or another angel that is even higher, higher than uh, Jibra'il sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala. malaikatu wa ruh Not only the angels, but also the greatest angel will come on earth during the nights of that. However, <laughs> night of that is over. Nights of Qadr is over. Nights of Qadr is over. I was just supposed to tell you that what shall we do after the Nights of Qadr, inshallah, I will tell you. Do we have time? Oh my God, the time is also over. But let me tell you very fast. From all directions. What does that mean? All directions. From all affairs. For the sake of the affairs of the people. This is one interpretation that they come for all the affairs of all the people. All the affairs, all directions, all the people. So three meaning all the affairs of the people, all the affairs, one, two, three, one million, one billion affairs. I don't know, many affairs. All the people of the earth on earth and from all directions not from your your right but also from your left from the skies from the front from all directions it means that it's full of angel earth <laughs> subhanallah it's just just the coming and going of all the angels yeah if my eyes are open then i can see the angels i can feel the angels this is all the interpretation of the very first, second ayah. You don't know what this light, night of Qadr is, so Allah tries to explain it to us. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min al Better than 1,000 months, 83 years of the life of the supplicants, the worshippers, the true worshippers of Allah, the day and night, they 24 hours worshipping Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Another sign of the importance is that not only the malaika, all the malaika, but also the angels coming and descending on earth. The special malak of Allah Taala, who is named Ruh, comes on earth, not from one direction, from all directions, for all the affairs, for all the humanity. Salamun hiya hattaw matla il faj. Peace be upon and salam be upon this night till the dusk or the sunrise. This matla al-fajr can be the first fajr or the second fajr. The first fajr is the time of salat or it can be the second fajr which is uh, let's say uh, the dusk and the sunrise actually. According to the words of the Urafa, it's not the first fajr. It is the second fajr. Naql al mashhur the word uh, that most of the people, most of the ulama say, it's the first fajr. But they say that it can, it's highly probable that it's the second fajr. That even after salat, you try to be awake and try to receive the blessings from the angels because angels are out there. Even during the from the first fajr to the second fajr, actually. So what do we have to do in order to take advantage from the things that we need to have after the night of Qadr? The most important thing is to keep whatever we have received and is depicted for us, assigned for us in the nights of Qadr, safe. Keep it, maintain it for yourself, you know? Don't let it go away. Because it's qadr. It's not the qadr. It is assigned. It is depicted for you, your fate and your destiny in the book of, of, of your like uh, actions and deeds and the book of your fate and destiny. And we're talking about the positive things. Those positive things that are depicted for you, inshallah, if they will be dedicated to you during the year, then we have to keep them safe, you know, intact. We can make them contact. How? By doing the negative things. 
by thinking negatively during the year, okay? It means that your free will, your actions and deeds changes your fate. It's not 100% sure that whatever is depicted to you and assigned for you during this night will be dedicated to you during the, the year. It is assigned, but your free will can change it. The sins can change it, okay? So, the most important thing for this revolution that we have started during the Nights of God is to continue this revolution. I have been reciting Quran, continue reciting Quran. I have been saying more salats, Say my salat on time, try to say it on time. Continue like this. I was spending more time with my Lord, talking to him, having more closeness and approximation to him. Try to speak to him more, having your intimate relation with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, closeness to him, you know, that's it. Try to continue like this and try to keep them safe. You know, otherwise, if you just go back, there is a flashback. It's really probable that we lose, lose track of the blessings that were supposed to be given to us. Our main purpose is to be tawhidi, is to be godly. Okay, don't forget God. Don't forget Allah wa ta during the life, your life and our life after the month of Ramadan and after these nights of Qadr. We have to keep them. How can you save them for yourself? You know, you have to have the muraqaba. muraqaba. We have the musharata, muraqaba, and muhasaba. Musharata is before that. Yes, in the night of God, I had the musharata. I had the conditions for myself. Say yet, be like this, be like this, do this, do this, before the night of God. During the night of Qadr, you also had the musharata and, muhas and, and muraqaba. You had the masharata, meaning that you had some conditions for yourself. You said, I have to be like this. I have to be like this. You also had the muraqaba, so that you don't uh, feel sleepy. You don't go to the bed, for example. This is also muraqaba. Watching your attitude, your thoughts, and your inclinations. This is muraqaba. After the nights of Qadr, also we have to have this muraqaba. Raqib. Raqib means closeness. You have to be close, very close to your attitude, to your thoughts. Your nafs shall be, your agal shall be very close to him, to these thoughts and to your actions and deeds, to your inclinations and tendencies of your heart. In order to take the hand, not to be deviated, your thoughts and your inclinations and tendencies and actions and deeds are like a, you know, a messy child. If you don't have control over him, he will be really messy. But if you have control over him or her, then he will be under control. And it's very probable that he will face felicity and salvation, for example. Muraqaba is this. Only be on call, on watch. Try to have a plan for yourself. Today, I have to be like this. Say my salat on time. Recite one page of the Quran. Recite dua al-ahd. And be kind to my parents, for example. Recite one fatah for my late father or my late mother, for example. One page of the Quran. Four or five actions and deeds that you do. And never forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any moment of your life. This is the core idea of all the good actions and deeds. The core idea. It's just like the string of your, of your rosary. You know, the string that connects all the bits together. What connects all the bits together? Remembrance of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That's the string. So you say this one, item one, item two, item three, item four. I have the muraqaba during the year. And, at, and by the end of the day, before going to sleep, you have the muhasaba, calculation. Did I do this or not? Did I do this or not? Did I do this or not? Did I did, do this or not? If you did it, try to have reward for yourself. Yourself. At least you say, Alhamdulillah, shukran billah. If you were not successful, you have the mu'ataba, ita, blaming yourself. Oh, Sayyid, you were supposed to do this, but you didn't. Why? 
This not only beautifies the life in the future because you have a disciplined life, but also gives you power. My dear brothers and sister, if you want to be powerful in heart, not be lazy, if you don't want to be deactivated on a passive mode, if you, if you really love to forget afflictions, trials, difficulties, unkind behavior of the people around you, try to have a mission and goal for you. This can be a goal. Item one, two, three, four, try to assign five goals for you, for your, yourself in your life. The main of the goals that connects all of them together is the remembrance of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Every night, try to have the muhasaba for yourself. This can be a goal. One of the benefits and the blessings of assigning goal for you yourself is that it gives you energy. It gives you a lot of energy. Try to assign goals for yourself in your life and you will see how energetic you will be during the day. Nothing will be important for you. Nothing. Just watch yourself. These goals. Yeah, you do your business towards your family members, towards the people around you yourself, okay? This doesn't mean that you will be neglectful. You have negligence towards the, the other people when you focus on yourself. No. You will do your best towards the others, but if they belittle you, if they try to show unkindness to you, it will not hurt you. It will not hurt you. This is the problem. The problem is not that we do things for the other people. We spend time for the other people. The problem is that we do things good to the other people. They don't show gratefulness to us. They don't even tell us a thank you. They sometimes belittle us, you know? This is the problem. Then we become unhappy. But if you have a goal for yourself, and that main goal is Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, I have to do the things for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, then even if you don't show, if, if they don't show, the people don't show kindness to you, and they are not grateful to you, you will not become sad. This is what we want. This is what really we want. We don't want to cancel totally the helping and assisting to the other people. We have responsibilities. We have duties to everybody. The problem is that we sometimes become regretful because we have done something to the other people. The other person is not kind to us, the other party. We become tired, you know. We become regretful. We become tired. Then these two will fade away if you try to have a goal for yourself. Especially if you try to say that, okay, Ya Allah, I do this for you only. Then if somebody is unkind to me, I'm sure that you will be kind to me. You are the compensator. You are the Jabbar. Even if the other party that was supposed to show kindness to me, show gratefulness to me, show, show his compensation to me, has not done his duty. But Allah will do it, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this power and the faculty and the talent of, of, of being shakir and grateful to whatever we have in our life, inshallah ta'ala. Thank you very much. The time is over. And it's somehow the time to Salat al-Maghrib here, dear brothers and sisters. Thanks all of you. Jazakumullah khaira for your attendance and your participation. Thank you. So <clears throat> the last ayah was this that Tanazal al Malaika to Warruha fiha bit na rabbi min kulam salam on hiya hatta matla il faj. This was the final session for the tafsir of Surah Mubarak Qadr, inshallah. And I hope that there were fruitful useful items and discussions mentioned in this class and we take benefit from this class the nur and the light of the quran and the words cognitively discussed here in this class thank you inshallah we will continue after the month of ramadan with our weekly tafsir to our like uh 
ordinary tafsir that we had before in Surah Mubaraka, Baqarah, Akhir Da'wana, and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammadin wa Alihi Tahirin, Fi Amanillah, Du'as.